All right, welcome back. Now, we're checking out Weeble to see how it has changed. These Bollinger Bands, I thought this was just like a, you know, maybe like a glitch or something, but, well, now it's got this cloud in behind it. It's a little weird. But yeah, this, this seems to be working fine. You know, if I tried to load up Think or Swim, it, it must have been taking on too much data or something. I'm not sure what was going on there, but I was having a whole weekend, too. It was weird. But if I try Weeble... I mean, Weeble seems to work. I wonder if Weeble isn't pulling... Well, I know Weeble's not pulling as much information. Which is why I started deleting watch lists in Thinkorswim. You know, to get rid of some of the old stuff. But I said, hey, let's give it a try with Weeble now. Let's see if that works. See if that can keep us uh, keep us happy until our our think or swim starts to work. And this is a pretty similar setup that I used when I started with Weeble. I like the DMA, the Displaced Moving Averages. Let's get rid of that and see if I can. There we go. I do like the percent %B, though. It works pretty well. Let's see. Indicators. Now, it looks like we get fib levels in there. I don't know if that was in there before, but it is now. Oh, what's this? No, oh, they did add that in there. Looks like they did add STDV to Weeble. Or is that lower? Let's go with the fib lines. Let's get rid of the STDV. We're not really worried about that. Let's see. It didn't seem to, you know, show anything there. I think maybe uh, your moving averages and your pivot points. Those were always pretty useful. Let's see here. Yeah, okay. Let's put the, the MACD on here. Hmm, I don't know. I kind of like that, but I don't know that I meant to do it. Uh, the story of my life. Oh, well. Hmm. I wonder if there's a way to turn that off. Let's get rid of our fib levels here, and let's get rid of our SAR. Chart gets pretty noisy here. We can't really look at it. I mean, that's a pretty good signal, though. 
I mean, it looks like that's when the MACD catches it, too. Well, let's reload it again. Yeah, I wonder what is going on here, because this doesn't seem to be acting right either. I mean, kind of functionality-wise, I, I guess it is. I haven't used it in a while, but the... You know, the way it's loading isn't quite acting exactly right. Yeah, I've been wondering what's going on here lately. And of course, just like with uh, with the stocks here, you think you get one direction figured out, and then it starts moving against you. Although that doesn't look horrible. doesn't look horrible. I don't even know what this is. Let's see. That's right. These we click on, the others we drag. Let's see. It doesn't look horrible either. Yeah, if we can get a bounce off of that. Hmm. Though we can have a little uh little redness there, so kind of makes that one a little hard to tell. Duolingo. Now I just saw that on the uh little Linux machine that I booted up to play in there. Really, I just boot them up to see what uh programs they have. Yeah. Neat little high there. But if this Duolingo is uh, making its way around and you can download it and use it, looks like it's getting pretty popular by the way the stock's moving. And the MACD, we can see a big break there. But we're on a four-hour chart here. Let's see what that looks like on the daily. Yeah. We like pizza. Yeah. We gotta buy things we like. Oh. Yeah, trying to drag it over there again. This one's been in the upper band there for a while. You know, uh, not that it couldn't continue to repeat that trend. It's kind of given a mixed signal here, though. Silvergate Capital. And that looks a little overextended, but it's still well within a range that it could continue running, too. Let's see. AMN Health. Lots of health stocks here. Let's see, diodes. Diodes are probably important. Yeah, 
And this isn't a terrible little pullback. It seems like it has uh, just short-term little pullbacks each time. Although that does seem a little, little way over. Huh. Yeah, I think I would maybe leave that one alone. Or at least watch it. That way you can, you know, plot an entry and plan on it for either direction it might go. ACMR. Let's see. And Polymer Holdings. This looks a little more interesting. That's a bit over uh, over two. But pivot's not that far away. So if we get a pullback somewhere around our pivot, you might you might see a good entry there. But I also think these pivot points have something to do with the you know Fibonacci lines too. Yeah, I wonder. Let's draw one and see how they line up. Let's find our tools here. All right, and let's get rid of those. doing wrong here drawing uh oh I think I broke it Yeah, it doesn't seem to want to let me use the tool there either. What kinds of stuff is acting funky? Let's try another one. There's a green one. Yeah, why aren't those drawings working? Well, that kind of sucks. Hmm. Hide all drawings? Yeah, I'm not quite sure. I'll have to mess around with this and see what's going on, and I'm going to have to go back through and completely relearn Weevil. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's going to take a little bit of time. I'm going to have to go back in and completely relearn Weevil. And sometimes it's just best to move on to a new project anyway. Yeah, wash your hands of something and just go on. I think we find some things are worth our effort and some things aren't. And sometimes we got to pick what is and isn't.
We all must struggle with this task from time to time. As you can see, I keep trying to drag them over here and... That's not how it works. If you don't do it right, then it doesn't work. I like these Bollinger Bands, though. And I forgot how much I really liked the uh, Bollinger Band art. I thought some of that stuff was pretty uh, interesting. You know, just to watch them, you know, they're pretty trippy. You know, they're wavy. You know, just to sit there and watch them. I, I saw some really interesting uh, Bollinger Band art things, so... Anybody that likes uh, or might be interested in that, if you've noticed, like, Bollinger Band art that you really liked and took a snapshot of, I might be the only one, but maybe not. Yeah, let's talk about that in the comments below. Yeah, maybe weird things you've seen. That looks like a whole bunch of hot dogs. Yeah, looking at Bollinger Bands is kind of like cloud reading. Or, uh, yeah, I guess cloud gazing. See, I think they might even change uh, the, the way this MACD looks, too. Because it seems to look a little bit different. It seems to pop out at you a lot more than it used to. plot our crossovers here is what it looks like. That's you know, that's when we get our crosses and our fast line and our slow line. Yeah, let's check out another time frame. You know, when we see these big drops, it forms these big bubbles in the Bollinger Bands. Although not very often does price break out of the top of the Bollinger Band. So, you know, if you used a strategy where you broke out of the top of the Bollinger Band, like it does here or here, uh, we would have to build that and back test it. Uh, yeah, once we can get our thinker swim working. And those are some pretty good bounces in Apple right there. And we kind of come down here pretty steeply, but it, it doesn't seem to represent that steep of a drop here. All of those differences you got to pay attention to. Although reading candlesticks can be tough. It takes a long time to learn to read them. Let's see. Um, yeah, I think I know of three channels you can go read candlesticks at. 
Uh, I think I started off on Ross Cameron's channel, you know, reading candlesticks, because, I mean, that was the biggest one that had the most ads. So, you know, naturally you end up there. So we read the candlesticks, and you learn a lot from the videos he's got. Yeah, you know, but then you'll end up, uh, let's see, where did else does candlesticks? I don't know if Ricky does candlesticks, but I think Charlie does. I think Charlie teaches candlesticks. I think Ricky teaches indicators, you know, more. And then Charlie at Zip Trader does indicators too. Or at least there are some videos there. Yeah. But you got to go over to like, uh, what, like boiler room trading, uh, you know, and see them live and they explain all of these little candlestick movements. Much better than I can. I don't, I don't really quite understand them, you know, as well as they explain them, so... But, I mean, that's what we get when we try to teach ourselves to do something. You know, we search around for the best information we can find and try to put it all together. Yeah, even when we get these crossovers, it's still a big move, so it, it would be kind of hard to catch that. But Apple has been way up there for a while, hasn't it? I mean, it does tend to go up, so maybe that's that's uh, the plan for Apple year over year. Of course, you know that's that's why we buy Apple. Well, let's see here. is kind of having a crossover, isn't it? But if that crossover is just that dip there and it changes, then, then, then we could speculate on that. Uh, that could be a fake out, but that's where we got to set alerts in both directions. See if the drawings work yet. Mm, doesn't seem like it, but oh well. If you watch, thanks for watching. <laughs> if not, I'll uh I'll try harder next time. <laughs> See you later.